Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Chapter 23, Gauss Law, problem number 37. Remember, it's the 10th edition of Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday Resnick Walker, international edition. Uh, problem number 37, let me read out the question. A square metal plate of edge length, metal plate, this is important, this is a metallic plate. A square metal plate of edge length 8 centimeters and negligible thickness has a total charge of 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb. Part A, what estimate the magnitude E of electric field just off the center of the plate at uh, a distance uh, of 0 0.5 millimeter from the center? By assuming that the charge is spread uniformly over the two faces of the plate. Part B, estimate E at a distance of 30 meters, uh, large relative to plate size, by assuming that the plate uh, is a charged particle. So, uh, we have a metallic charged plate, metallic charged plate. So, this is a metallic uh, plate of some size, square plate, 8 centimeter size. So, length is equal to 8 centimeters. So, let me write that here. Length, suppose A is 8 centimeters and total charge of the plate is given 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 total charge is 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs yeah so uh, one thing we have to take care is that this is a metallic plate so charge will be distributed on both sides of the metallic plate okay uh, charge will be distributed on this face as well as on this face that being explicitly mentioned in the question even if it was not mentioned in the problem we would still consider it because this is a metallic plate so uh, this is going to be field mapping of this metallic sheet uh, so we have some field lines originating from this side they will spread out okay they'll spread out the way i have shown there the field lines here go straight for some while and then spread out the field mapping is going to be this way let's suppose both the surfaces are having charge density of sigma surface charge density charge per unit area of sigma uh, so since it's the metallic shear so uh, charge will be uniformly distributed on both sides so we have to find out field uh, at a distance of 0 0.5 millimeters from the center so we had to find out field somewhere here okay very close to the center very close to the metallic sheet we had to find out field here so what we'll do is we'll use uh, gauss law for this okay we'll use gauss law for this let's draw a gaussian surface for that what is gauss law first let's write that gauss law is flux through a closer surface which is given by integral e dot da is equal to q enclosed charge enclosed by the surface divided by epsilon zero okay so in order to solve this uh, uh, theorem we have to consider a gaussian surface we have to consider a gaussian surface so that's what we'll do here we'll select a gaussian surface that will look like a slender a small slender here cylindrical gaussian surface so that's what i'll do here so this is my gaussian slender symmetrically placed around this uh, metallic sheet okay so half is lying on this side exactly half is lying on this side we would find out feel at this point note that the flat surfaces the plane surfaces of the slender are i have kept them parallel to the sheet okay so that we can exploit the symmetry uh, and this is being the cylindrical part of the surface okay cylindrical part is this way now if we consider uh, direction of area for different parts Remember, direction of area is taken perpendicular to the surface. So, for this uh, surface here, for this plane surface here, direction of area is going to be this way. So, let's write that E vector here. And for this one, a prime vector, area is same, just the directions are opposite. Okay, just the directions are. For the curved surface, direction of area will be radially outward. So, if this is axis of the slender, this is the radial direction, radially outward radially out so what is the direction of electric field from the field line mapping we already know that uh, field is directed this way here since this flat surface a plane surface of the slender is very close to the uh, to this metallic sheet so field lines are straight here they diverge later on okay they diverge later on but very close to the surface they are normally they are uh, parallel and normal to the sheet uh, field here is again this way Field here on the curved surface is this way. 
So you can see for this flat surface, angle between field and area is zero. Again here, the same field and area uh, are parallel, so angle is zero. Here, angle is 90 degree for the curved surface. So for the two flat surfaces, angle between uh, electric field and area is uh, zero degrees. And for the curved surface, uh, angle is 90 degrees. That we need, okay, that we need. Since we have placed this uh, Gaussian cylinder symmetrically uh, on the two sides of this uh, uh, charge in metallic sheet. So whatever the magnitude of field here E, same will be the magnitude of field here. Just by symmetry we can say that. Okay, just, I'm not talking about the curved surface. I'm just talking about this flat surface and this flat surface. They are symmetrically placed on two sides of the uh, metallic sheet metallic plate so field here in magnitude will be same as field here just by symmetry direction we already know that direction is here rightward and here direction is leftward so directions are opposite but magnitudes are same magnitudes are same now uh, these things this angle property will exploit on the left side of the gaussian uh, uh, theorem on the right side we had find out q enclosed what is charge enclosed by the Gaussian slender? Okay, charge enclosed by the Gaussian slender. Now, uh, the part of the metallic sheet, metallic plate lying inside the Gaussian slender is here, this part here, and this part here. Same area A as this flat surface and this flat surface, same area A, same area A. Charge density is sigma. So charge from this point to this point will be simply sigma into A. Sigma is charge per unit area. So total charge will be ch sigma into the area. Same is the case here, sigma into A. So sigma into A plus sigma into A will become twice sigma into A. Okay, twice sigma into A. So Q enclosed is twice sigma into A, twice sigma into A. And then uh, left hand side is to be solved. So let's write this now. We'll break this integral for three parts of the Gaussian slender. I'll break it like this. E dot dA for the curved surface of the slender. Okay, for the curved surface of the slender. And then uh, plus integral E dot dA for the, for the plane surface, say plane surface 1 and plus integral e dot dA for plane surface 2, okay, for plane surface 2, is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0, Q enclosed is twice sigma A divided by epsilon 0, okay, twice sigma A divided by epsilon 0. Now, for the curved surface, we already found angle is 90 degrees. For the two plane surfaces, angle is 0 degrees. So, let me mention that here. Here theta is 90 degrees, here theta is 0 degrees, here again theta is 0 degrees. Okay, So dot product is 0 here, so we get rid of this integral. Theta is 0, so it will be simply e, dot, e into dA, again here e into dA. So let's move on to the other page. So first integral is 0, the second one e dA, integral e dA for plane surface 1 plus integral E dA for plane surface 2 is equal to twice sigma A divided by epsilon 0. Okay, twice sigma A divided by epsilon 0. This and this one remains there. Cos of 0 is 1, so I'm not mentioning dot product now. Cos of 0 is just 1. So, uh, this becomes E. Now, for the flat surface, this flat surface, the same argument is for this flat surface, two reasons. One, this is small in size. This flat surface is very small in size, number one. Number two, it's very close to the sheet. It's very close to the sheet. So we can assume, we can assume, and this is a very good approximation, that field magnitude is same at all points of this flat surface and at all points of this flat surface. If you take a bigger cylinder and far flat surface is far from the metallic sheet, then you can see field is field lines are diverging, meaning a field here and field here will be different. Okay, but since the size is small and it is fairly close to the metallic surface, fairly close to the metallic surface, so field at different points of this flat surface will be same. Field at different points of this flat surface same, and both are having the value e. So. 
uh, I'll take e common e out of this integral integral d uh, d a is a again e outside integral d a is a is equal to twice sigma a divided by epsilon zero so this implies uh, a we will take common and will get cancelled out so e into e e plus e is twice e is equal to twice sigma by epsilon zero two and two cancels out so e is equal to sigma divided by epsilon zero sigma divided by epsilon zero this is an important result okay this is an important result two things to be noted here number one if we have a non-conducting charged sheet okay non-conducting charged sheet field is sigma divided by twice epsilon zero okay field is sigma divided by twice epsilon zero if we have a metallic sheet <coughs> field is sigma divided by epsilon zero so there is this difference why is uh, this difference there because in case of uh, non-conducting charged sheet you have just one charged sheet now here you have two charged sheets okay charged on this side and charged on this side that's why this difference is there number one number two you have to remember this result for all times to come at least as long as you are studying physics uh, field close to the metallic surface is always sigma divided by epsilon zero field close to a metallic charged surface if you are fairly close to the metallic charged surface is always sigma divided by epsilon zero sigma divided by epsilon zero now uh, i can write it in terms of total charge e is equal to q uh, remember char charge density sigma charge per unit area so total charge divided by area what is area over which uh, charge is distributed on this side and on this side say this is a this is a so it becomes twice a a plus a is twice a it's not just distributed on this surface it is distributed on this surface as well so total area on this side and total area on this side so a plus a is twice a so divided by twice a prime i'll write because I, we have already mentioned a so i'll write a prime uh, into epsilon zero now this one we have to calculate values are given charge is given a is given we have side so side square is the area epsilon zero we already know so let's write that so e is equal to q q is given 610 to the power minus 6 coulombs we'll use everything in si system then we have 2 into a prime 2 into a prime area okay area of the sheet side of the sheet is uh, what is it was 8 centimeters so area will be 8 into 8 is 64 into 10 to the power minus 4 remember it is 8 centimeters so we have to convert it to meters so 64 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters square then we have epsilon 0 which is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 okay into 10 to the power minus 12 so this thing i have already worked out you have to do that it comes out to be 5.3 into 10 to the power 7 newton per coulomb newton per coulomb so very close to the center of the metallic sheet okay very close to the center of the metallic sheet just a distance of uh, at a distance of 0.5 uh, what was the distance at uh, 0.5 millimeters so fairly close to the metallic sheet at around its center field is field is 5.3 into 10 to the power 7 newton per coulomb which is to say 553 into 10 to the power 6 newton per coulomb so that's 53 million newton per coulomb okay i want to have this comparison with part b so 53 million newton per coulomb so this is about part a fairly close to the surface of the metal uh, field is sigma divided by epsilon zero and is always normal to the surface perpendicular to the surface then in part b we're asked to find out field far from the center at 30 meters from the center remember what are the dimensions of this plate eight centimeter by eight centimeter okay eight just length is eight centimeter width is eight centimeter so compare that with 30 meter distance we are at a distance of 30 meters now 30 meter in comparison to eight meters is eight centimeters is huge is very large so from such a large distance this plate would look like a charge a point charge very small teeny little thing which we'll consider as a point charge uh, uh, our problem already mentions that explicitly that we have to consider 
assuming that the plate is a charged particle. Even if this was not mentioned, we will still consider it since we are uh, far away from the plate. So plate will look like a point. If it looks like a point, it behaves like a point. Okay. If it look li looks like a point, it behaves like a point. So we just use the result of a point charge. Okay. We use the result of a point charge. Field due to a point charge is gamma Q divided by epsilon Z. Gamma Q divided by R square. Gamma Q divided by R square. Gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9. Total charge is 6 into 10 to the power minus 6. 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs. At a distance of 30 meters now. So R square is 30 square. It's already in meters. So everything is in SI system. So this is what you had to work out. I have already done that. This comes out to be 60 Newton per coulomb. very close to the metallic sheet metallic sheet is just bigger than this a little bigger than the size of my hand when you are very close to the metal sheet field is 53 million newton per coulomb at a distance of 30 meters so within a span of uh, within a distance of 30 meters field drops to just 60 newton per coulomb from 53 million cool newton per coulomb to just 60 newton per coulomb so field kind of rapidly decreases here. So that's it. This is what we are asked to find out in this problem. Okay. I hope that helps. Thank you.